I stood here uh, th this time last year uh, when I think about back to the beginning of the year. I, I don't think anyone in this room could have predicted uh, some of the things that have gone on uh, in the first four or five months of this year. The uh, rebellion, uh, Extinction Rebellion uh, demonstrations, the school strikes, all of these children all around the UK, all around the world, standing up and saying, our voice needs to be heard. The documentary from David Attenborough, uh, and then followed by the Climate Change Committee's report. Um, and now also a, a plethora of political parties almost falling over themselves to claim or to say that there's a climate emergency. The shift and the change has been so fast and so incredible. I don't think anybody in this room could have predicted it. But what we now need to do is to make sure we use that, we utilise it, we build on it, and we're seen to deliver against that. We are truly, I think, at a tipping point. Uh, and we all now know there is an urgent need for action. That's no longer a debate, it's a fact. And it's quite clear now that the people right across the whole of this country want us to start dealing with this, to start sorting it, and to help them create a better future. I think all the recent polling shows, again, that I think in the last poll back in March or April, 80% of the public are concerned about climate change, and that's continuing to grow and grow the Climate Change Committee report published couldn't be clearer in terms of its recommendations that the UK has to be net carbon zero by 2050, and obviously Scotland has been set a slightly more ambitious target. And to meet that target, what's also quite clear is that the renewable energy capacity across this country has to quadruple in that time period, and in fact, the whole of the electricity generation system has to double to be able to deliver this future we need. I think in the, in the Climate Change Committee report, I thought the best, the most powerful, the clearest line in the entire document and in the summary of the document was the one that said, you know, we have all of the technology to allow us to do this now. There is no need for us to wait. We're not looking for a new invention. We're not looking for somebody to come up with a new idea. We can do it all now, there is absolutely nothing to stop us from taking this action. And I think that is incredibly important. This isn't about us going backwards. This is about us going forwards. And this is about us creating a better world, a better country, a better energy system, and a better life for everybody in this country as well. And the prize to me is very, very clear. The prize is the future of the planet. It's about clean air. It's about healthier lives. And it's also about delivering a, a world-leading all-electric economy and an all-electric future that we can all be proud of. We have shut down all of the coal plant in Scotland. We have built the UK's biggest onshore wind farm in Scotland. This is already happening. We just need to do it faster. I think offshore wind has been a, you know, a huge success and will continue to be a huge success. But it's time to get real about the future. It's time to now talk about how do we do it, when do we do it, how do we deliver this, and how do we meet the challenge. And we need to have some honest conversations in doing that. Honest conversations about the future of wind farms in this country. Honest conversations about the future of renewables, about the future of electric vehicles, about the future of the heating system, and about the investment that's required to go into the grid to allow it to deliver all of that. I'm quite clear about the role I want Scottish Power to play in that future. I'm quite clear that I want us to be at the heart and at the centre of, de of decarbonising this economy, building more onshore wind, building more offshore wind, solar, creating a smarter, better energy system and a smarter grid system, and driving forward the electrification of transport, and also improving the heating and decarbonising the heating system. This year, we kicked off by being the first fully integrated utility to generate all of its power from 100% renewable sources. We're doing that and delivering that from over 40 wind farms across the UK, um, but we want to do more. We want to quadruple the number of wind farms we have, the number of output we have from renewable generation. We've been doing a lot of that over the last wee while with offshore wind, and we've shown the development, the innovation, and the ability to bring down the cost of offshore wind and offshore wind will continue to make excellent strides forward. But let's not forget, and let's make sure people remain focused on the fact that this is all built off the foundations of onshore wind. 
and onshore wind will still be at the foundation of delivering net carbon zero for this country. And we need to get a focus back on that. Over the last three years, I've been heavily involved, as a, a whole load of other people in this room, at bringing forward the case for onshore wind. It's economic case, the case for the fact that there is public support. The last government survey just a couple of weeks ago, 79% of the population support onshore wind. We know it's cheap. We know it's fast. We know we can build it. We know it will deliver jobs. We know it delivers a benefit to the economy. So why are we just not doing it? And which politician or who is going to stand up in front of all of those school children and say to them, we would love to have done it, but we just didn't like the way it looked. It is time to get real. It really is time for us to get real and have those conversations and drive those conversations forward. Scotland has made some fantastic progress in decarbonising, and that's why the Climate Change Report says Scotland should go for net zero carbon by 2045, because of the progress and the success we've already achieved, and because of our capability to do even more and do it even faster. And like everyone in the room, I know that is a colossal challenge, but it's one we will all be hugely proud of when we deliver it and when we achieve it. And if Scotland has to achieve that and be successful, then Glasgow needs to be at the forefront of that. This is the biggest city in Scotland, and many of us will tell you it's the greatest city in Scotland. Um, and we want Glasgow to be at the forefront of driving Scotland towards net carbon zero. And I'm confident Glasgow can do it because it really is a no-nonsense city. Glasgow delivers. Glasgow's got the heritage, the engineering excellence, and it's got the ambition and the will and the drive to take that leadership position. We've already got a city that's got the largest onshore wind farm on its borders that's connected into the city. We have got the grid and the ability to manage the grid system in this city to allow the electrification of the transport system and to allow us to decarbonise the heating system. And that grid will be at the heart of that future. That's why I think it's great to look at a city first, because no one can say you're hiding from the challenges. And in Glasgow, 70% of the population live in flats or shared accommodation. They don't have street-side car parking. They don't have driveways. They don't have the ability to have their own personal private electric car charger. So we need to drive forward solutions, drive forward different answers. And that's what we want to do. And that's what we want to do working together with Glasgow. Develop a system for an urban economy that delivers low carbon, zero carbon transport, it delivers zero carbon heating, and then we can show the rest of the country and the rest of the world how you go about doing that. And that's why it's really, really pleasing today to be involved in announcing that working together with Glasgow, we are going to make and strive to make Glasgow the first net zero carbon city in the United Kingdom. Now, I know my friends in Edinburgh yesterday made some announcements, and they're very ambitious as well, and that's fantastic. I lived in Edinburgh. I love Edinburgh. But this is Glasgow, and we're going to be first. <laughs> and we're going to be better. And we're going to lead, lead that race. And that's what we want to create. We want to create the mentality of a competition, the mentality of a race. And this is the race to zero. And race to zero is not a bad thing. This is a race to zero, which is a fantastic prize, because everyone wins out of the race to zero. Whether you're a member of the public, whether you're a company, whether you're a city, the entire economy wins out of this race to zero. And that's the message we need to get across to people. So what's our big ask going forward? And what is it I want to see? I think, and I think everybody thinks, we're now beyond the tipping point. We have that momentum. People in this country are quite clear. They just want us to get on and go and deliver this. The climate change report has given us an incredibly clear target of what we need to do and when we need to do it. So what we now need from the government and from Westminster is the white paper that shows us the route map and the framework to delivering net carbon zero. Because the 2020s, we need to be delivering all of this. We can't still be sitting here debating it and talking about it. We can't wait. We need to start now. So my final closing message and the thing I want everybody to keep talking about is let's get real. Let's just go and do it. Thank you.